This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, so we are still in the demo session. Today we'll be the last demo session. Um, and after this, we'll be starting with the actual set, actual classes. Now, um, we'll try to understand a few of the things. We'll try to explain a uh, few of the things manually as well as um, how do we do that in terms of the automation. So um, this, this is the one that we had seen yesterday, uh, like that we have uh, implemented yesterday in a session. Um, there were some kind of issues in my system due to which it was not working. Let's try to run it out. I did not change anything. Everything is similar over here. Uh, let's try to check whether it is working now or not and then we'll uh, then we'll move to the next next things in terms of the play right play right there are things we cannot complete in each and everything in, in two or three sessions so i'll see i'll i'll show you the highlight that uh, play right has um, in terms of um, writing the test automation executing the test automation and in terms of the configuration part um, just wanted to make sure like everyone is able hear me properly. Yes. Um, can anyone answer? Me? Yes, perfect. Okay, thanks. Good, yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, so uh, one thing uh, uh, like this one, we have done um, a huge one uh, in terms of the testing, which we were trying to do kind of for the registration of a user. This is again a dummy one. Um, but this is how, in general, uh, Playwright will work. There is no, no hard and fast rule that you will have to implement what kind of method you have to use for what kind of um, uh, application. So whatever you see over here uh, will be exactly similar in terms of the real sessions as well. Real sessions in the sense like the Playwright, the complete Playwright, playwright as well. Even if you um, you know complete 100% of the Playwright, you will you will be seeing like only these, the, there are like a couple of more methods are there, uh, not couple of, but there are a lot of other methods. But in general, you'll be writing um, all, you'll be utilizing all these methods in the same way as we have used over here. Okay, so let's try to run the test case and then we'll see um, how it is working. So we have something, um, so npx playwright test and then we have given the path of the test file if you if we just want to run one single one single file if you want to run each and every every test case that we have at that point of time we can use simple npx playwright test so let's try to run this and check how it is working So it has launched the URL because we have given headless as false. The application is still loading. Um, so it, it will basically uh, wait for the completion of the load, like the complete application load first and then only it will go up and do the automation so if you see over here it says that it has waited for 30 seconds and then uh, basically it failed it's just because for one particular one element as we know that the playwright has default waiting time of 30 seconds okay so that's where it failed um, saying it has like already crossed 30 seconds uh, to check it out due to the slowness of the application uh, <laughs> but we have seen like it filled few of the um edits so let's let's try to see once again now this time if you see it has been loaded pop-up has been um uh, it, it clicked on the submit button and then the form which we have filled have also been loaded on a model which which was on a pop-up and there we can see like it has been passed successfully now, in terms of uh, the things that you see, uh, that it automatically generates a HTML report. We do not have to write any any uh, lines of code to generate the reporting part. Second thing is, um, as we have just given screenshot as on and videos as on, uh, so we also do not have to write any lines of code for taking the screenshot and recording the videos. 
what is meant by recording the videos i'll just show you see if you see this this particular test case we did not even write any line of code where we are saying that wait for an element and second uh, to take this screenshot of the uh, pages right we did not see any any lines of code where we have written to take the screenshot of the page we have just included inside the configuration file saying that screenshot as on now let's try to open the report that it has generated so after completion of each test execution it will basically recommend you the command that we have that we can use to open the report now uh, i'm just providing this one and now you'll see that it will open a report so you see it has opened a report saying student regression form this is saying regression as we have marked the tag over here as we have added the tag as well with a regression as a tag okay now let's open this and you'll see like um, see what happened before hooks is it basically tries to launch the browser it created a new context uh, inside the browser as we have discussed in our um, first session where uh, it basically launched the url it also create a new context and inside that it will create a new page so this is like a setup part where playwright automatically does for us we did not we did not basically create browser.new context and we did not create browser dot con browser context dot new page if you if you see over here we did not write those kind of lines uh, where we manually create a context and um, create a new page by just writing two two steps which is which i'll show you again um, for the next next uh, test that we'll be writing so what did we do is we have just used a page fixture which automatically does all these things for us which is launching the browser what kind of browser that we have given the information inside the configuration file which is chrome then it has created a context what is meant by context context is something so so uh, let's say whenever you try to open a new incognito what happen is this is basically a chrome context chrome browser context and internally as i've discussed earlier internally uh, there will be some kind of code running which will first in uh, create the instance of the browser that means it will open up uh, a browser and on that browser one context will be created this particular things what whatever you see is one context on on this context they have cre automatically created one particular page now as many as times you click on this plus icon it will create a new page on the browser so this is known as a new page if you if basically let's say if it is not allowing us to create a page that means this uh, search bar will not be available and we will not be able to search anything on the browser okay so we basically have to create a page on the browser to search anything or to work with any of the things and that's where here also you'll see the first thing is it has launched the browser it created a context which is browser context and on that browser it has created a new page and after that whatever the steps that we have written it has automatically logged it inside the report as well okay so this is like everything that we are that we have written in terms of um, in basically terms of um, the code that we have written over here so every each and every steps it has also logged in uh, logged in inside the report okay so let's go back again and after completion of the test when it uh, check that okay whether the thanks for submitting the form is appearing on the uh, after clicking on submit or not after that if you see we did not close the browser right we did not basically write uh, to close the browser we basically have to write browser dot close or we can also use it over here like page dot close okay as we are trying to use page fixture so we can directly use page dot close over here as well but we did not write anything right and we also saw that after completion of the execution the browser have been have automatically closed right so that is also automatically being taken care by the page fixture that we have written over here
okay so this page fixture is um we have discussed this like page fixture is a special type of method that playwright has given which does a work for setting up the browser as well as closing the browser at the end at the exit at the end of the execution okay so after hooks if you see like after completion of the test execution what it does is it has taken the screenshot it also attached the screenshot to the report automatically and then it closed the page and context after that it saved the video recording as well and it attached the recording as well so this is a simple report that it has generated after execution of the test case now if you scroll down you will see like it has also taking the screenshot automatically and if you see this this is the video recording that it has generated for the complete test that we have done over here so you can see each and every steps that we have that it has filled it has like whatever in terms of execution it has taken the time it basically captured each and every steps uh, and at the end after come up after clicking on submit it is basically throwing us all this kind of value as well okay so this is again one of a powerful tool where it automatically generates everything for us only the thing that we have to give is or that we have to provide is to write inside the configuration file whatever you have to do you can write it inside the configuration file now um, now in terms of the reporting uh, did i close that Now, in terms of reporting, if I show you, uh, there is something known as trace. Uh, we have discussed in our first session for the demo as well, where uh, we say that it generates basically a trace list, right? So, in terms of screenshot, in terms of um, videos, we can uh, automatically see it over here. It will also uh, allow you to download the video if you want to download that. Okay. So this is one. Second is as I talked about that, it also generates a traces, right? So let's see what is the traces. As we have given on the first failure, so it has not added in terms of our reporting. Let's try to make it as on. So traces as on, that means it will always uh, generate the traces. If you if you just give like on first retry, that means after failing the test case, it will generate the report you we basically use like log filing only when the test case are getting failed if the test case are passing at that point of time we do not even require log so now let's try to run it again and see how it is how it is generating the traces traces is the complete log file basically and uh, if you have worked on selenium you might be knowing that we have to basically use uh, log 4g to generate the logs whereas playwright automatically generates each and every logs that it has to generate okay somehow it has um, it has basically uh, passed the test case by running into the headless mode and let's now go go to uh, go and open the report and see what is the difference that we can observe over here so even if you run the test case in the headless mode uh, headless mode in the sense you will not see the browser have been opened everything will be captured in the same way even if you are running the test case in the headless mode everything will be captured in the same way so you see here even for that also the videos has been uh, generated where we can see like it is trying to load the application and after a few seconds it started uh, doing the operation that we want to do and it have completed the test case now earlier I, I talked about the traces so you can see like it has generated the traces as well now if you click on this you will see what is the use of this trace that i'll i'll just explain you so this is the first line of code where where oh, let me check it out right so this is the first line of code that we can see where we have uh, launched the url right so if you observe over here um in in this particular things for each and every steps you will see like it has taken the screenshot automatically it has taken the screenshot for each and every test case and then there will be um, there are three different uh, button that is available 
on the traces that you can see one is action second is before and third is after so it basically says that what is the action have been performed for this particular line what happened before performing the action so you can see like before it performed the launching of the url the page was empty that means the browser was completely empty and after launching the url what happened so it basically launched the url now if you go for the next step over here then you can see that it is saying now will be uh, this action will basically so uh, basically display us that what are the next action that we are going to perform what is the next action that we are going to perform so if you see here in terms of action it is saying the next action will be performed on this particular element so it is basically highlighting over here right yes, you can see that it is basically highlighting that means trying to say that the next action will be performed this so this uh, tool that you know, this traces is like very handy in terms of you know debugging part you can see like where the test case have been failed uh, what kind of uh, failure it has been uh, it has been observed where is this screenshot and in terms of the reporting you can directly go for the uh, videos as well to check what step have been failed so in terms of debugging it is it used to be a very handy. now if you see now if you uh, now, if you see for this one, okay. Now, if you see for this one, it is saying the next action will be performed the first line, first name. If you see before, there was nothing happened, not even the high, highlight kind of. But after, if you see, it has filled the test case. So, for each and every steps, you will be able to see those kind of things that. Either it is trying to uh, highlight that the next action will be performed on this. So you can see like it has even uh, highlighted with the red red button over here, red circle mark over here. And then before you can see nothing happened and after uh, performing the action, you will see that the female radio button have been checked. So you can see like it have been checked over here. So this is again a complete log, log file it has generated for each and every steps you will be able to see the complete details what happened before and what happened after it is also known as a time travel what is meant by time travel is after the execution you can check what happened before execution of the step and what happened after execution of the step whereas selenium does not have given this kind of tool where you can go back and check what happened before execution of the test and what happened after execution of the test okay so this is again one of a powerful tool uh, in terms of playwright that it has given to log the complete traces okay um any question or any uh, doubts over here till now okay so um let's move to the next thing that um that i'll display it over here so uh, in interest of time i have already written the test case i'll just try to explain you how it is working uh, because if, if we try to complete again the test case as we have seen in our previous session that we we were able to complete only one particular test case so i've i've written the test case uh, just just before starting our session so that i can explain you in a better way See, earlier we have used page fixture, which automatically does the launch of the browser as well as create the context of the browser and it creates the new page. Now we are trying to use a browser fixture, which is another, uh, which is exactly similar to page fixture, but there is a slight difference in the browser fixture whenever we use. This is also, this is also one of a, uh, special method that playwright has given it also does some kind of similar work that page has done which is launching of the browser then creation of a browser context and creation of a new page in terms of page if you use page fixture it will automatically create but if you use browser fixture then we have to write the code to create the context and create the new page so if you see over here there is a method known as new context which basically create a context on the browser it basically creates a new browser context which will be similar to incognito mode that means it will not share any cookies and cache 
okay so um in terms of page if you see we did not write any lines of code which create a new context and new page this page will automatically does does for us whatever these two lines of code is doing so what it is trying to do it is as we have just explained that whenever you open a browser any of the browser this will basically create first context and it will create a new page which we can see over here right in the same way this browser if you see uh, by using a new context method we can create a browser context basically creates a browser context and return us a browser context handle and on this browser context we can create a new page as well so we what did we do like we have created a new context and we have stored inside a variable known as context and by using this context now we have created a page um, this new page basically creates a new page in the browser context whatever the browser that we are trying to use on that browser it will create a new page and it will also return a page handle the complete page handle whatever the new page that we have created and that we have stored inside a variable and now af after line number five uh, the complete handle that we have is now completely depending on the variable that we have declared over here by using this variable itself we will be able to write all the methods call all the methods of the playwright now from here uh, from the line number five this page and this page fixture are exactly similar okay so if you observe the difference between page fixture and browser fixture is in terms of page uh, if you use page fixture it will automatically create context as well as new page on the browser whereas in terms of browser uh, fixture we have to create new context and new page uh, by writing the two line these two lines of code okay after that um, other lines of code are exactly similar that we have written in terms of uh, over here by using page fixture okay so now uh, we have one application uh, which i'll just give a demo for which is which is this one um, so what happened in terms of this this is one of a dummy uh, e-commerce application where we can uh, uh, do some kind of shopping over here so first thing if you see we have something known as login where we have to fill the e email fill the password and click on login button so what we are trying to do over here is um, so first thing in term, even in even if you have to do this kind of things in terms of manual testing how will you do that the manual testing step will be first launch the url second we'll say like fill the valid username and fill the valid password then click on the login button and after that we'll validate if the user is on the home page or not if the user is on the home page that means it the user have been logged in successfully right this is how we generally write manual test cases as well like manual test steps as well in what is the uh, what is basically test automation is whatever we do in terms of manual testing will convert that into the automation script there is nothing there's nothing difference in terms of the automation the only difference is like whatever we are trying to do manually we'll just convert that as a script so that the code will do for us whatever we were doing manually right so if you see over here we, what what did we do earlier we have discussed uh, a method known as go to which is which is helpful for us in terms of launching the url so we have given the url this is exactly similar to launch the url that we have given over here second step is fill the valid username so we have written a locator that we have seen uh, earlier as well like how do we write the locator anyways like locator uh, concept will again go through at the time of starting the play right but we have uh, gone through in in uh, in our previous session where how do we write the locators so by using the locator we are saying that fill the username that um, that i have for for the application that we are trying to use okay and in the next line um, and the next line we are 
um, trying to do the validation uh, like we are trying to fill the password as well it is exactly similar to the previous line where we have written the locators and by using a fill method this is not a new method uh, you might be wondering like whether this is a new method or not so we have used a fill method in our previous session as well okay so this is a fill method where we are trying to fill the password for this particular application okay first we have launched the url second fill the username fill the password and third one is uh, we have identified the locator so if you just go inside this and try to try to check the locator that we have written then you'll see that it is able to identify you can see like this is highlighting over here so it is able to identify the login button so we have written as login we have as id available so we know that whenever there are id available as a property we can directly write a locator as hash log id value in terms of css selected and then we are trying to perform an assertion over here um, as we have discussed yesterday it is exactly similar to what we what we are trying to do the assertion over here by using expect function so what we are trying to do um, earlier in our previous test case uh, we tried to validate this particular element is having the text value as to contain text value as thanks for submitting the form so we have identified a look an element which which basically was for which basically um, was for after filling the application whenever we click submit button it opens a model and for that model we have uh, taken a locator and then we what we are trying to validate is if this particular element is having the text as thanks for submitting the form or not this was one way there are a lot of way in which we can write the locators this is not only the one way here what we are trying to do is here we are trying to say that we have a button uh, i'll i'll show you with what this button is so I'll, I'll just go to the application that we have over here okay so i've logged in into the uh, system and then if you see this particular text is basically matching different uh, different links that it is available on the home page so you see this one this is able to identify home button uh, order button cart button and so on right so we are saying if we are on the home page that means this these buttons should have to be available okay so for that we have written a locator which is currently identifying more than one element if you see here it is saying five total number of five elements are identifying with this particular locator so this locator is for the class name so if we have a class name available then we can use dot and class name in terms of css selector now if you see this is basically able to match five different elements now if you want to make it to identify only one element for that we have used a first first as a method available in playwright which says that whenever we uh, whenever a locator is matching more than one element elements and if you want to work on pro work on for first matching element at that point of time we can use first if you want to work for second element then you can use nth of one that means this one is basically an index which which start from zero i'll i'll explain you later what is index indexing concept okay so either we can use nth method or we can directly use first method if you want to work on for first matching element if you hover on this first it says that it returns locator to the first matching element though it is able to match five different element by using a first method will be able to restrict this particular locator to match only the first element available on the page okay and then we are saying to be visible that means we are just saying that expect this element to be visible on the page okay it's it's simple if you just try to read this particular line it says that expect this element to be visible on the page 
to be visible means it ensures that the locator that we have given is available on the page is visible on the page okay now let's try to run this uh, um, and check it out how it is working so i just click run button and you'll see that it launched it filled the username password and it has also validated that we are on the login page okay so there you'll see like it has basically been passed now what happened over here is we filled the username we also filled the password and we clicked on login button so if we have like four four five test case or ten test case that is okay to every time login into the application but let's say if you have thousand test case like so for for all the for all the thousand test case it is not mandatory to basically login into the application we can be we can skip the login part and then we can directly jump into the uh, home page as well or where wherever we have to do any kind of action so for example you have 100 test case um, for all the 100 test case it is not required to every time you log in into the application and then perform some kind of actions instead we can directly move to the dashboard page where we can do some kind of actions whatever is needed for us in terms of the test automation right so how do we achieve that earlier in our first session right earlier in our first session i said that um, playwright also supports api automation right so this is one part where it will be helpful in terms of skipping the login page how do we do that is i have also created a test over here that we can see so by using by taking the help of test uh, which is like api automation we can be able to skip the test cases so we can write it once and then we can utilize for all the 100 test cases and it will skip for skip the login page test for all the 100 test cases okay so um here i'll just explain you um uh, not in detail but uh, i'll just try to explain you what we have done over here so here also this is exactly similar to how do we create a context for browser if you see the context that we have created over here by using a browser which is browser.newcontext where we basically are trying to run the ui automation part so what is ui automation is we have to navigate uh, we have to launch the url and then we have to fill some kind of actions or we have to click on the element Whereas in terms of API testing, we do not require any website, any browser to launch any URL to be launched. API testing is something where we can directly use the API of the um, API and uh, provide some kind of request and it will send us response in terms of the JSON format. Okay, so example, if I talk about, um, so if you see over here, we have logged it into the application by providing some kind of username and password right what happened in terms of any of the application is this is basically a front end there used to be a system called back end where they will be writing a code to check then they will basically be writing the code to uh, interact between the front end and back end we have written a, a username and password how this application is able to identify whether i am a correct user or not right for that, they have a backend system and they also have a database where they, at the time of registration, they have stored the username, they have also stored the password. And now whenever we try to log in, by using an API, it will be able to identify whether we are a correct user or wrong, wrong user. So if you click on login, now you can go to the network tab, like uh, how do, however we try to write the lo locator, you can go to the network tab. And inside that you will see there is a API called that API is basically a login API. Okay. So what are the what are the different details that it has? We'll just go through. So this is an URL that, that this is basically an API which is request URL have been called at the time of clicking on the login button. So we uh, earlier we just saw that uh, we are trying to fill the username and password but internally what happens it will show you in the network tab that means for the api call 
so internally there used to be an api call which uh, having a method as post method and then it will also take a payload payload means the request data that we are sending to the api so what is the request data whatever the username and password we have filled on the application okay and after that if you see it has it has basically given us some kind of response in the json format json format used to be a key and value pair this is key and this is value so you can see it has given us a token which we can see it over here it also generated a user id for this particular the user that we have used for that user the user id is this and a message saying that login successfully okay now there is one more concept whenever uh, whenever you uh, do a login in any of the application the developer will write a code in such a way that the token that it has generated over here they'll also store this particular token inside the application tab and inside the local storage if you go and check inside the local storage by going to you can directly right click on the application click on inspect go to the application and inside that if you go to local storage you will see the exactly similar token and value will be stored it over here as well so developer will write a code in such a way that as soon as you click on login button an api will be called and whatever the response that api is providing us as we have seen over here the response is token and so and so one authorization part will be there here it is mentioned as token in some other application it might be authorization as a token name so this particular things will be stored inside our local storage of the browser okay and now if you try to let's say if you try to again log in if you try to launch the url again for the same application uh, on the same browser you will see that it is not even asking us for username because at the time of login uh, it has already set some kind of authorization and browser is able to identify that there is this particular user who have already logged in but if you try to do the similar kind of things in the incognito mode you will see that it has it will basically ask you the username and password because incognito does not store any kind of cache or cookies value if you if you see here inside the application and local storage there is nothing stored over here now let's see what will happen now we know that inside the local storage it has stored a key as token and value as this particular value so i'm just copy pasting over here in terms of the incognito browser so what i'm trying to do is i'm manually setting up the token and the value that we have copied for the token over here now I have just set it up the token and value inside application tab and local storage of the browser. This is a local storage of our browser. Now let's say refresh the application once and see what happened over here. Now it did not ask us to log in into the application. It basically directly redirected to the home page. Right? How it happened? It happened because we have set the token value over here saying that this is the authorization of the user which consists of a username and password and it automatically identifies a user which is stored in the database okay so this is what we can use in terms of the API automation to set the authorization at the local storage and from there onwards it will skip the login each and every time whenever we try to do some kind of um, some kind of automation in terms of uh, web web application so if you see over here we have launched the url we have filled the form and then we have redirected to the home page but if you see in this particular things uh, <laughs> this is similar to however uh, however uh, it is basically generating the uh, response so if i show you in terms of the if I show you in terms of um, uh, Postman, which is which is very helpful for uh, API API testing in terms of manually. So what did I do is I have I have taken the URL that we have seen at 
add the login this is the url that it has called that means the api that it has called which is this one what is the method method is having a post method so if you go in and go to the postman exactly similar things i have done this is the api this is the post method and what the body it has taken the body is that you can see inside a payload if any kind of request parameter or input value that we are trying to send then you can that this we can we are trying to send inside the postman as well as a body and now if you click on send button that means now we are trying to click on login button and it has given us some kind of response which is token user id and message whatever it has given us at the time of login similar things it is also providing in terms of the postman and now using the same api automation using the same similar api uh, so what what did i do over here is we have created a context for api we are not trying to create a context for browser you see over here this is empty completely empty where we have not used any page or browser fixture as we are trying to interact with api so we do not require any browser to be launched okay so for that we have created a context for api and then we are trying to do a post call how do i know i have to do a post call we can see over here inside the browser as well where a url is this which is api is this and the method is post method so we have to do a post call over here we are trying to do a post call it is the same api that it is uh, calling af after clicking on login button and we have provided a data over here what data the same data that it has taken that it is taking inside the payload in terms of api terminology the input data that we are trying to send is known as a payload okay so we have stored inside this and that we are trying to send with along with a key and value pair so whatever you see inside the curly braces in javascript or typescript are known as are basically known as object in typescript an object consists of key and value pair in typescript okay so that's why we have given a key as data and value whatever we have stored it over here and now uh, it basically uh, provide after uh, performing the api automation it basically provides some kind of response so we have stored inside a variable we have created a variable and stored the response inside this we are only interested in the json format of data as we can see that this is uh, replying us back the data into json format json is known as javascript object notation the full form of json is json is javascript object notation so it basically uh, provides us value in terms of json object so by using a json method we can just get the token that we want to get it from so what why we are trying to get the token as we have just seen an example in terms of incognito if we store the token on the application local storage it will automatically skip the login page so that is what we are trying to do by using the automation so what did we do over here is we have just stored the token and inside the web automation whatever the web automation that we are trying to do we are first launching the url url of the application and using a method known as add init script have been given by the playwright this add init script is a method available inside a playwright which used to set some kind of value or run the javascript or typescript code okay so this if you see it is saying inside the window go to the local stories now let's navigate over here as well so this is a window this is a browser window and inside this window we are saying go to local storage so that is what we have written over here inside window go to local storage and set the value what kind of value that we have to set a key as a token that we have set it over here and the value the value that we have received from the api call of the this particular value so we have stored the token inside a token variable and that token variable we are trying to use it over here to store inside the local storage okay and now what did we do we are just trying to launch the url if you see this example where we have tried to launch the url filled the username and password and then clicked on login button 
right and then validated whether we are on the home page or not but in terms of this if you see we are just launching the url and validating whether we are on the home page or not okay so how it is happening because we are trying to set the token on the local storage exactly similar to however we have done over here by setting the token to the local storage and it skip the login page now let's try to run this as well and see what is happening so you'll see first it generated a token and now you can see that it automatically taken us to the dashboard page not onto the login page okay and it is saying one passed that means it is able to validate that we are on the home page let's try to run one more time and and after after this let's wait for a couple of seconds to see whether it is really taking us to the home page directly or not so let's wait for three seconds so now if you see it will just uh, it will first uh, generate the token that token we can see over here and now you can see it has it did not ask us to log in into the application it directly taken us to the home page you can see that the token that has generated i have also printed over here and it's saying one passed you can see the report as well by just going through with this particular command this this is how you know playwright is a powerful tools are helpful in terms of skipping some kind of validation okay so this this um, we basically have only one test case so it might not be uh, much more helpful but if you have let's say thousand test case at least if it is if these three lines of code if these three lines of code is able to save one second of time for each each test case let's assume that you have find the test case at that point of time it will save 500 seconds which is close to somewhere around eight eight or nine minutes and like reducing the time uh, time by eight or nine minutes or ten minutes is really a great achievement in terms of the test automation okay so that is that is what you know the playwright is uh, helpful where we can automatically use the playwright api library as well and get through the automation wherever we want to either skip some kind of things or we want to test some kind of edge cases at that point of time we can use the you can take the help of api uh, like playwright api automation as well okay um so this is what i wanted to provide in terms of our demo session today um if you have any questions uh, you feel free to ask you can feel free to ask now hi praveen can we handle this uh, ssl certificates also so certification part will also be able to handle uh, by using okay. the playwright um in term like in terms of however we do like api testing so this course is basically not consisting of the complete api will have a, some kind of basic api automation as well but um if you go for like complete api automation by using playwright it will be able to do everything what other tools is able to do so even in terms of the ssl certification and all will be able to match uh using the playwright api Suppose if we have to browse through unsafe mode and I mean, if it is a normal automation as well, so web automation. So when you enter the URL, it will say that, you know, you get an error code saying it has to go through the SSL certificate and manually when you go to advance and then go to the unsafe mode, you, you can log in. But that part can we handle here through web automation? Yes, 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 yes. Everything we will be able to handle by just saying, um, if you go inside this you can say it as there are many other options where you can say where you can basically ignore many of the things where is that inside the new context itself So there are a lot of things. One one is like uh, ignore HTTP errors, HTTPS errors. 
So if you provide this, it will not throw you an error even if you go for the unsafe mode. Okay. It basically ignores those those kind of errors whenever you try to okay. uh, get like you click on advanced setting, advanced land, and then browse through right for the unsafe. Okay. It provides over okay. here to ignore those kind of errors. Okay. Thank you. Any any other questions? Um, Pravi, uh, just a question. Will you be covering a little bit more about browser context and page in the upcoming sessions? Browser context and page, uh, right? Um, so we'll we'll again once again cover uh, at the time of going through the the play, right? Once we start with our play right session, we'll cover up in detail again. Hi, Praveen. Hey. Do we get any assistance or support uh, during our practice? You'll get 100%. Okay, great. Thank you.